<laughs> All right, let's get to our first guest. I mentioned uh, they are someone in the entertainment industry. Uh, in fact, they are a film director. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Werner Herzog. Hello. <laughs> Werner. Scott, it's a pleasure to see you again. It's been quite a long time. It really has. It's been a minute, as the kids have started saying. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been. <laughs> Werner, you're, you're, you're one of our oldest friends on the show. We've been talking to you for now a decade, I feel. It does feel in many ways as if we have always been involved in the same conversation. <laughs> Although there are many detours and tangents, we always seem to find our way back to this, saying hello to each other. It's usually how we end our conversations. <laughs> we say hello, and then we turn around 180 degrees, we walk. Our traditional ritual uh, in leaving one another is to uh, stand face to face, then nod three times, turn 180 degrees, raise our faces to the sun and say hello, and then walk away from each other out of sight, no matter where anyone's car may be parked. And usually, we have an agreement that we'll just keep walking in that direction until we meet back up again on the other side of the earth. This agreement has been notarized, <laughs> and we are bound by a sacred trust, not just between ourselves, but the United States government. So, Werner, it's such a pleasure to see you. For those of you who don't know who Werner Herzog is, you're obviously uh, from another place. German? <laughs> Yes. I knew that. Um, but you are a film director. You've directed so many wonderful two films. Two out of two. <laughs> You're doing very well. Thank I'm you. proud of you. Thank you so much. You've directed so many wonderful films that people would enjoy. Which is your favorite? You directed The Bear, right? No, chef. <laughs> You're directed something about a bear. Something about Mary. It was more <laughs> about a man uh, who is in uh, close proximity to bears. Yes. Does, does this give you a clue now? Yes. The grizzly man. Grizzly man. Oh, grizzly. Oh, not okay. the grizzly man. <laughs> he was not portrayed by Robert Pattinson. <laughs> Although at the end of the film, spoilers, it's pretty grizzly. It remains grisly the entire running time of the film because it begins when the man in question is already dead. Does it? So it's like a... I think so. <laughs> <laughs> this is my recollection. It's been a while since I directed the film and seen it, so... But I believe all of the footage is posthumous, but now that I'm saying this out loud, that seems unlikely. But that's just the most popular of your films. It isn't. Oh. <laughs> or it may be. Did you do one called Fitzcarraldo, or is that someone else? Fitzcarraldo, why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding fences, dragging boats oh. over hills. Is that one of yours? It is. Great. It was a, a very arduous film to make. Uh, it starred uh, my old friend, but mostly enemy, Klaus uh, Kinski, who was a, 
a, a demon who got stranded on earth in biblical times and decided, I guess I'll become an actor. Um, he uh, made my life miserable, but also wonderful. And uh, he is dead now, so he can no longer provoke me or get in the way of my films, but I do have his skeleton in my home. <laughs> and every once in a while, I look it in the eye sockets and say, ah ha ha. How'd you get the skeleton? Did you wait for the flesh to, to rot off of it? Or did you like scoop it out somehow? His will specified that I should receive his skeleton, but his eventual skeleton were the words in the document. So his raw dead body was shipped to my home and I just had to wait it out. But I couldn't touch it because it wasn't mine yet. Could you drop acid on it at I all? I was or? forbidden. Um. <laughs> Make sure you get your wills all taken care of, folks. <laughs> it's important. So you, you what, what would you say is your most popular film? Um, Grizzly Man. <laughs> all right. <laughs> have you even directed something recently, or? I bet I have. <laughs> But I'll tell you something that you've done really recently. Yes. Which everyone here has probably seen, which is, of course, you acted in a little television series on Disney Plus called The... High School Musical, <laughs> the series. Well, you were in that. I, pl I played Principal Schmidt. <laughs> I'm constantly coming out of my office saying, where is that music coming from? Can anyone else hear it? I feel as if I'm being driven mad by phantom orchestras all day long as I'm trying to make schedules in here. That's primarily what the principal does. He makes the schedules makes every schedules. night. What else would he do? <laughs> every night he posts the schedule. <laughs> Who has classes when? Wait, waiting around for children to be sent to him. <laughs> yeah, what do they do? No one knows, <laughs> and they won't say. And what's interesting about the job, they have an underling called the vice principal. In case the principal dies, <laughs> the office must never be vacant. Continuity. <laughs> Unfortunately, my role was cut from the finished series. I'm so, so sorry. But that led to you working on a different show on Disney Plus, the, the Mandalorian. Yes. Where you played a... A mean guy. <laughs> <laughs> who brokers deals with bounty hunters. And uh, what he wants more than anything is the child. That's right, Baby Yoda, a.k.a. Grogu. Grogu, yes, a wondrous creation. When I saw him, I wept. He was, because he was originally made out of onion. <laughs> it was a long process to get the puppet just right. They tried many foods first, several gourds. <laughs> and finally they said, what about rubber? <laughs> it would look more realistic. And you shot, it seemed like you shot one day, one take. Is that pretty accurate? What you saw was the result of 100 takes per scene. <laughs> per scene? I wanted to get it right. Wow, so you were that committed to the craft of acting. I mean, you've acted before, you acted in Perhaps the- Perhaps you've seen Jack Reacher. <laughs> <laughs> you are miming reaching. <laughs> That was primarily what he would do, which is why people were so upset when Tom Cruise was cast, because he's a little short of stature. It made more sense for a smaller person to be reaching. <laughs> but luckily they have corrected this for the fans, and now there is a show on Amazon Prime uh, where Jack Reacher is a giant shaved gorilla <laughs> whom some people inexplicably like. 
Did you ever work with Tom Cruise again? I can only imagine like you being in Rock of Ages or something like that. <laughs> I played Tom Cruise's manager in Rock of Ages. Um, I would come out of my office every once in a while saying, where is that music coming from? I am being driven mad by a phantom orchestra. It didn't make the final cut. You'll get it in there one of these days. <laughs> So yes, the Mandalorian, he is, uh, he's from Mandalore, he... How, how deep did you get into the, the lore, Mandalore, the, the mythology of Star Wars, you know? Not much before going to set. Uh, when I got there, I realized, uh-oh, I should have studied up on this because it added a lot to the filming day. Uh, when any time anything would happen at all, I would say, what is this? <laughs> Who's this guy? Why is he mad at him? Seems like it wouldn't add time. You could just cut it out in post. Where but... is this set? <laughs> what time period are we talking, fellows? <laughs> but eventually you got it. You're, you're there with uh, Apollo Creed himself. Were you in scenes with him? No, <laughs> I don't think that I was. I don't think so either, now that I think about it. You were with like a bunch of... Uh, uh, I did have several scenes with Ivan Drago. <laughs> this was an early draft of the script where Dolph Lundgren, playing Ivan Drago from the Rocky franchise, finds himself in the Mandalorian universe and says things like, What? Where am I? Who are you? Where is Rocky Balboa? I was just about him. So essentially, the Russians shoot him into space. He travels through a wormhole to a long time ago in a galaxy far away. Oh, you've read it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> a lot of people felt, hey, this might be its own movie and we shouldn't try to shoehorn it into this series. It's kind of a big story. <laughs> Um, is that fun? Do you want to do more acting? Do you want to do more science fiction? I like doing uh, acting. I like science fiction because uh, the science part is the opposite of nature. I don't want to do any nature fiction. <laughs> yeah, there isn't a lot of nature fiction. There's, what a, I mean, what The example? Revenant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Happening. <laughs> the Happening uh, by M. Night Shyamalan, which... Uh, 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 supposes a world gone mad when the plants get angry and they start uh, killing people by making them walk backwards for a few seconds and then <laughs> commit suicide. How they could they... just stop producing oxygen and kill everybody at the same time, but <laughs> I guess that did not occur to the plants. <laughs> if I were the plants, that's what I would have done. Hopefully you'll get there. I don't wish to be a plant. Really? Out of anything in the world, if you could be reincarnated into anything in the world, be it animal, mineral, vegetable, the rest, <laughs> fire. <laughs> what, would, what would Werner Herzog like to be reincarnated as? I have thought about this, uh, of course, many times. Um, just this morning, I was thinking about it again, and uh, frankly, I can't stop thinking about it. I think about it every waking moment. <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now, and maybe because you brought it up, maybe not. But if I were to be reincarnated, uh, I would wish to be a tire fire. <laughs> <laughs> like the kind you see on Newsweek magazine. <laughs> She's all right. She's all right. <laughs> um, because tire fire, I like that it rhymes and that it lasts forever. Yeah, what else rhymes with fire? Higher. Higher. Pyre. Shire. The Doors did a song like this, right? Unfortunately so. <laughs> What kind of music do you like, Werner? Um, it will not shock you that I like industrial music. 
the more clangs and bangs, the better. If you could replace the drums with just like a guy hitting a pipe onto another pipe. Now you're talking. <laughs> My favorite Broadway show was Stomp, of course. Of course. Where they hit so many trash cans and trash can lids. I was in heaven. Did you like bring in da noise, bring in da funk? Not enough trash cans. <laughs> I said you could be doing this on top of some sheet metal guys. <laughs> bring in da sheet metal is what you wanted. That's what I would have said. <laughs> Had you the chance. But it is impolite to yell out at the theater. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking that as a request for shouts. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> well, Werner, you, you had such a career in the past, but we can... I still have a career. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is we can only live in the past... In the past, we need to live in the present and ultimately the are future. Are you going to ask me what are you doing here in Maine? Yeah, what are you doing here in Maine? <laughs> I was giving you a long wind-up to it. I appreciate it. it. Um, I'm working on my new film. Uh, do you recall several years ago I made a sequel to a film uh, that uh, I had not made originally? I made a sequel to Bad Lieutenant called Bad Lieutenant Port of Call New Orleans. That's right, with Nicolas Cage. Yes. Yes, that's right. You were also working on a sequel to a different movie, Goodwill Hunting. Port of Call, Los Angeles, yes. <laughs> we lost funding on that one. Oh no, I'm yes. so sorry. <laughs> but this is a, a sequel to The Lighthouse called The Lighthouse Port of Call Excuse me. The Lighthouse colon Port of Call colon Portland colon Maine. <laughs> The film in question, The Lighthouse, starred Willem Dafoe and the Batman himself. The aforementioned Robert Pattinson. Yes. This one will star, as Bad Lieutenant did, completely different people. <laughs> who's who's going to be in this? This is exciting. Steve Buscemi and Tom Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Rather than... Uh, Two men in a lighthouse being driven mad uh, by uh, isolation. This is uh, two men in a lighthouse uh, being driven mad when a, a pigeon gets in the lighthouse. <laughs> it's very difficult to get the pigeon out. Do, I gotta ask, do they open the door? They open the door, <laughs> several windows, but the pigeon won't take the hint. <laughs> They employ blankets and pillows, and at one point, even a broom. <laughs> even a broom! Eventually, the pigeon finds its way out of the lighthouse. He couldn't stay in there very long because the lighthouse is not very big. We're shooting on location at a lighthouse called Bug Light. <laughs> it is one of the stubbiest lighthouses in America. <laughs> Probably hurts more than it helps. <laughs> Just gets in the way. <laughs> Sailors on rocky seas will see this bug light lighthouse and say, is that a... No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably a firefly. <laughs> but we are shooting inside the lighthouse itself, which I have to tell you is not going great. <laughs> really? There's not a whole lot of room. Yeah, I mean, they're very small, confined spaces, and cameras are so big, I don't have to tell you. No, you don't. It's more like I'm telling the audience, though. I mean, it's But looking at me. They don't even know they're being spoken to. Cameras are big. <laughs> lighthouses are small. So very difficult to fit in there. And so, how are you working around that? I mean, you're such a genius with, with, you know, camera movement, I think. I've never seen any of your films. No, that is obvious. Um, uh, basically, the way I'm working around it is having the main locals um, help me uh, 
whereby whenever any of the crew complains, um, the main locals will tell them they have nothing to complain about and that if they only knew what a hard life was like, they would shut up. It's very, a valuable service that people in Maine seem willing to provide. They say, they say, why don't you go back to Los Angeles where the beach is made of sand? But of course the problem now is that many of the locals uh, see that there is some friction between myself and Steve Buscemi. Oh no, really? And, What's going on? Well, we have uh, disagreements on how the film should be shot. Uh, for instance, Steve Buscemi feels we don't need to be in the actual lighthouse and we could be on a set. And uh, I say no. And the locals have offered to kill him for me. I don't think I want Steve Buscemi dead. I mean, he's... No, nor do I, and I thank them for their generous offer. And I say, maybe a rain check? <laughs> How has Tom Holland been to work with? He's uh, uh, cinema's Spider-Man. He's a wonderful little boy. Um... I believe he's a grown man at this point. 30-ish, maybe? If you say so. <laughs> it's never come up? I've seen, when I see him, I just see a little boy. Not unlike my friend Grogu. <laughs> you still keep in touch with Grogu? Yes. He just had his first Holy Communion. <laughs> I gave him a card with a $5 bill. That's nice. <laughs> I'm so proud of that guy. <laughs> but Tom Holland and Steve Buscemi have started to go insane off screen, which is too bad because they're supposed to be pretty happy after they get the pigeon out. <laughs> really, so this is a movie that is supposed to have a happy ending. It was to be my first musical. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess, you, you play someone in a neighboring lighthouse who... I play someone in a neighboring lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> who comes in... They're usually pretty close together. Sure. And I yell from the lighthouse, hey, what's that music? <laughs> and they say, we're doing a musical over here. And I say, oh good, I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> Hopefully you'll keep it in this time. It makes sense now. <laughs> well, this is great. Le uh, the Lighthouse, colon. Colon. Port of Call, colon. Colon. Port Land, colon. Colon. Maine. Maine. It's a lot of colons. It's not the record, though. <laughs> Who holds the record for colons? The... Colon, the movie, which featured not only the punctuation, but also human colons. <laughs> it was an all-punctuation and human organ film. <laughs> sort of like a human centipede kind of film? What's that? You would love it. <laughs> I'm so surprised you haven't seen it. Have you? No. <laughs> but from what I'm told, it involves uh, uh, sewing uh, people's lips to the, the ain't, I know there's a young child in the audience. <laughs> and I'm so sorry we got down. Check out Human Centipede <laughs> on video now. Is it on demand? <laughs> on demand? You can demand it. Yeah. Show me human centipede! <laughs> can I watch it on... Can I watch it on Freeform with commercials? <laughs> I hope so. On Pluto? <laughs> You'd love it, though. It's, a, it's about, uh, you know, people forced to be uh, 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 together. <laughs> forced to be best friends. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> What if you were to watch one of my films, which would you watch? Well, I know about two. Oh, no, three, The, the Bad Lieutenant. I own The Bad Lieutenant on Blu-ray. I have not watched it yet. The original Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel? No, that one I saw um, in the theaters in Sacramento. A great theater experience. <laughs> <laughs> to see that 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the little Kaitel. That's right. <laughs> what made you want to do a sequel to that film? I mean, the first one is so iconic. He pulls someone over, he masturbates into their car. The end. Yes. He's bad. He's a bad lieutenant. Um, I suppose I wanted to make a sequel to that movie because I didn't like it. And I said to myself, what if it was like this? <laughs> and is it better, do you think? Yes. <laughs> I like my version of the bad lieutenant uh, better. It has more alligators. <laughs> How many? One. <laughs> when I saw Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel, I could not have been the only one thinking, where are the gators? As lieutenants go, though, <laughs> Harvey Keitel was bad. On a scale of zero to terrible, he was bad. On a scale of sergeant to lieutenant, he was a lieutenant. <laughs> yes. If I were to make a movie called Terrible Lieutenant, I think it would not be shown in theaters. If you saw what the bad lieutenant did, you don't want to see what the terrible lieutenant does. Well, this is exciting. I, I, I really look forward to seeing your film. One movie of mine? <laughs> yeah, some, one of these days before. I swear, next time you're on the show, I will have said, what, what's the one that I should see? Um, Fitzcarraldo is a fave. Aguirre, the wrath of God is also good. Um, little Dita needs to fly. Are you making things up right I'm, now? <laughs> I swear to God, I am not. <laughs> How many have you seen? Of my movies? Yeah. I've seen all the ones I just mentioned, and a few more besides. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Werner Herzog, everyone. <laughs> Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog. That's da, 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 one of da, da, the songs da. in the lighthouse. Oh, it is? Colon, port of call, colon, Hold it. Portland, colon, colon, Maine. Really? People just singing Werner Herzog. Werner Herzog. Da, 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 da. Herzog. I think I'm doing it to something from Les Miserables, aren't I? Like Werner Herzog. Master of da, the house, perhaps? Perhaps. What would you like to sing it to instead? Maybe like... Hold on, I think I hear a baby. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> Has a babysitter <laughs> brought a child there tending to, to the... <laughs> if you have a baby, just fess up. <laughs> Everyone knows it's you. In the balk. <laughs> now the, someone in the balk is no down there. <laughs> All right, you keep blaming each other. We know a baby when we hear one. This is the time for the blame game. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a baby, pass the baby up to us. I wish to see this baby. We'll take care of the baby the entire show. We'll raise the baby. <laughs> As our own. <laughs> Am I going mad? <laughs> I am being tortured by a phantom baby. <laughs> oh, phantom baby. Oh, phantom baby, <laughs> Bamalam. <laughs> this is a good idea for a film, though. Phantom baby. A sequel to the Phantom Thread. Yes. Phantom Thread, colon, port of call, colon, Phantom, colon, baby. Will Daniel Day come out of retirement for this, I wonder? Uh, right now, he is uh, uh, managing a bait shop. A bait shop? For a, for a role? Or he just... No, he's just uh, weird. <laughs> it's the dream, though. To be weird. <laughs> <laughs> to be weird. Yes, that is the dream. Well, guys, we need to get to our next guest. This is very exciting. I, I mentioned that they are in the service industry. 
Um, I met this gentleman when um, at uh, one of my favorite restaurants. He was replacing the ice. Uh, please welcome to the show Randy Snuts. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. Hey, how you doing? How you doing down there? Nice to see you. Wait, 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 wait. I like that little zip up. <laughs> Hot. Hey, buddy, how are you? What are you wearing? Amazon Essentials? I love it. Hey, how are you? Is, are you guys together? You are? So, such a bummer that you're going to have to break up with her tonight, huh? <laughs> uh, I can't believe I wore a bra tonight. <laughs> uh. Where do you want me? Uh, Where do you want me? <laughs> you're not Randy Snuts. No. I'm Carissa, his long-term girlfriend. Randy couldn't be here tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I deleted all his emails, so he didn't see your email. I invited Randy to be here tonight. Yeah, right. Portland, um, Maine. I really wanted him to be here. That was going to be a special, special interview. Right. And you're his ex-girlfriend, Carissa. We right. haven't We haven't met before. Mm, but I know you online. Oh, no, we have met before. Now that I think <laughs> about it. Met. Yes, that's right. A different version of me met you. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really sorry that Randy couldn't be here. Um, he didn't know that this was happening, and I never told him. And Excuse I... Excuse me. Um, that seems, I know we've only just met, yeah. but these actions seem not only scandalous, but also <laughs> duplicitous. <laughs> wow, coming from Werner Herzog, that's a rave. <laughs> I mean, um, I guess you could describe it like that, but um, I care so deeply about Randy. I love him so much, um, and I'm thinking about him right now, and literally my edible underwear is just, like, disintegrating. Like, <laughs> I, I love him. Um, but obviously, yes, we have kind of an on-again, off-again thing. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we, we're, we're in it for life. We are. <laughs> I mean, life is on most of the time and then it just turns off when people die yeah <laughs> what a what a metaphor <laughs> so it's like deep. a light switch you can only do once maybe twice if like you're resuscitated <laughs> do you guys want him to keep talking about the metaphor <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but I'm, I'm happy to you know see you again you look good Look really good. <laughs> Love those jeans. Black. Black jacket. Black shoes. <laughs> I love it. Is that nice. a little polo peeking out? Sexy little polo saying hello. <laughs> saying hello to me. What do we got over here? <laughs> Well, we all know Werner wears a safari jacket. Just wearing my standard film director uniform. Mm, so sexy, so casual, yet also elevated. Please, young woman, I may be married. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. Maybe. Marriage is just a number. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, whatever. Um, <laughs> I love. For, yeah. What? Uh, I was gonna say for people. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say for people who don't know. <laughs> Welcome back. For people who don't know who Carissa is, we have a guest on the show, Randy Snuts. Very, very popular. Carissa is not as popular, gauging by the reaction <laughs> she got when she came out instead of Randy. I don't know. Randy. I don't know. I had a lot of sexy little eyes on me. I see you. Whatever that little shirt is with the little stuff on it, I see you. I saw everybody making eyes at me with their masks up here. I saw. 
I know you guys, you guys, you might not love me now, but you'll love me later tonight. <laughs> um, but you, actually, yeah, you, 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 you tend to wreak havoc throughout Randy's life. Yeah, well, I always like to say, if there's not like, if the relationship isn't hard, it's not working. Hmm. So if you're not fighting and also effing, I heard there's a little kid in the audience tonight. <laughs> Then what are you even doing? Why are you on earth? You should be effing or you should be fighting. You should be effing or you should be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, I can swear. Yeah, you should be fucking and fighting all the time, just one big circle. <laughs> you should be fighting in order to this second one. <laughs> We can say it once, and it's still PG-13. <laughs> yeah, do we each get once, or do we get each Yeah, yeah, get... Don't, don't blow your load too early. Well, I already did. We, we can also say blow your load. <laughs> I already blew it. <laughs> I'm already soaked. <laughs> um, I, think, I think Werner has a question. Did you have a question? question? Um, where are you from? <laughs> Great question, Werner. Thank you. <laughs> The thing is that I actually don't remember. <laughs> Midwest. Midwest. Wait, why, why do you not remember? Where, do you have some sort of selective amnesia, a memento disease? Well, I had a really... The opposite really... of Mary Lou Henner disease? <laughs> <laughs> I had a really big Smirnoff ice with cocaine in it before it came out, and I'm literally like, you're lucky I'm talking. You're is that lucky over I'm the making... counter? Yeah. <laughs> wow. CVS. I hate when you go into the drugstore for a Smirnoff with cocaine <laughs> and you have to get the attendant to bring it out. I know. A little case. And they come out and they're wearing their little jacket and they pull the cocaine out and they go, mm. <laughs> Oh, it's table side? <laughs> oh, yeah. They make it right in front of you. It's awesome, actually. Wow. But it is annoying sometimes because <laughs> it takes a really long time. It's like when you get a coffee at like Intelligentsia and you're like, why the fuck does this take so long? Oh, no, I said, fuck again. You can have Verner's, right? Were you going to say it? What? <laughs> I, I, I had a feeling you were not... The F-bomb. The F-bomb. No, thank you, though. I appreciate the offer. Okay, I'm, then I'm going to say it again probably later. If, sure. On his behalf. Um, <laughs> but I thought, you know, tonight I'd come on and i talk to the women in the audience. Oh, good, okay. How many ladies are out there? Wow, there's a How, fan, literally a fan. How many babies are out there? No, you're not babies. <laughs> we know a baby when we hear one. There's definitely a baby out there. There's definitely a baby. <laughs> How many of you are going to make a baby tonight? Woo, me too. With one of you. <laughs> um, Lisa, do you have any children? Um, I don't know. That's what's so fun. I may have children out there. Um, and I guess I just want to say, if you are a kid of mine, like, let me know. Like, I really do. Do the 23 and me's. I'd love to meet my kids. <laughs> I really would. Um, but yeah, I did want to talk to the women specifically tonight. Okay, what do you need from us? You need our emotional support? <laughs> Hardly. Not even close. Um, so basically, I just wanted to come on here and talk um, about, for all the ladies who date men out here, it can be hard to know what's going on in their little noggins, right? Because um, I don't want to generalize or anything, but all men are stupid. <laughs> and it's really, and again, I don't want to make any stereotypes or whatever, but like men have no emotional intelligence. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I just wanted to help kind of translate like what I've learned because I am in a really healthy relationship. Um, like what the man is really saying when he says stuff, you know? Like sometimes we have to really read between the lines. I see. So do you have some examples of things that we as men say? Like, like Werner, when you're in a have you ever been in a relationship? Yes. <laughs> but you're not married. I might be. <laughs> I haven't checked lately. <laughs> I haven't been me in a while. <laughs> Do you have your phone? 
Yes, sh- shall I look it up right now? <laughs> um, but what are the types of things that men say in relationships that get, that are confusing? Yeah, so sometimes men are like, I'm going to go to sleep. That is one of the worst things that you can hear. They are so upset with you. They're furious. They, they are mad at you. They being, oh, they being the, the men are mad. Yeah, the men are ma- mad at you. They're just not good at communicating. So actually, um, Randy Snuts, um, he and I are currently together, which is so fun. I love it. But I'm still looking at you in your little shirt with your little things on it. What's, what are you looking at? What's <laughs> special about this shirt? Do you see his little shirt? He's got little, what's on it's, that shirt? I wouldn't say it's little. It's no, it's a little shirt. It's alligators. Hey, Werner. Gators. Thank you. <laughs> hey, guess what, guys? What, what's up, Werner? I've been married three times. What? <laughs> Once in 1967. That was so long ago. Once in 1987. And 1996. Is that, did that one stick? No, sorry, 1999. And yes, we are still together as of this Wikipedia entry. Congratulations, wow. Werner Herzog. Third time's a charm. So if you need any relationship advice from me, I'm happy to pick up the slack. <laughs> um... Yeah, well, I'm, I don't know that we'll need it, but I appreciate it. I've got it all handled tonight. <laughs> all right, so... Okay, so Randy, yes. obviously, he's not here, but he doesn't know that I left. He doesn't know that I'm here right now. So he's been calling me all day long, and I'm just going to play some of his voicemails so that you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got my friend Mark Padovano over there. Mark Padovano, Wearing, Rand, Randy's best friend? Yeah, he drove me up. Here. He, dr- he drove you to Maine? Yeah. I, from wherever it is you're from? <laughs> yeah. I had That's had, a long trip. I had I had think. so many Adderalls mixed in um, mojitos. <laughs> Seems like they would. Add a mojito. <laughs> a Dorito. A Dorito. A Dorito? Mojito roll. Mojito roll. <laughs> Let's hear these voicemails. <laughs> okay, Mark, whenever you're ready. Hey, Carissa. Uh, so I'm at the grocery store. Um, I'm trying to buy that stovetop stuffing that you eat for an afternoon snack, the one that uses a, a full stick of butter. And they're out of that specific kind. Like, I went and talked to a stocker and even the manager. And they were like, well, there's this other kind that uses less butter. And I was like, no, my girlfriend doesn't want that one. She wants the one that has the full stick of butter. So just want to let you know I couldn't find it. Sorry. Okay, so could you guys hear that? Okay, so... He's got a really good mic on his phone. (laughs) (laughs) So on the surface, it sounds like Randy's calling me about this stovetop stuffing that I make that calls for one stick of butter that I make every day at about 4 p.m. This is a snack. (laughs) This is just a little snack I have. Like after school snack, but I don't go to school. Every day at 4 p.m. Every day, like clockwork, 4 p.m. An entire box of stovetop stuffing. Yeah, with one stick of butter in it. one stick of butter in it. So on the surface, that's what it sounds like he's saying to me, right? (laughs) No. If you listen really closely, you can tell that the emotion behind it that he's feeling is that he has to go to the bathroom. I don't know that's an emotion. (laughs) It is. It absolutely is. Think about it. It takes over your entire body, your entire way of being. Why is everybody quiet? (laughs) You guys know. I actually have to agree with this. (laughs) You think it's an emotion, Werner, really? It might as well be an emotion of its own with uh, all of the uh, panic and fear that it inspires. You can think of nothing else at that moment. Yes. So, um, and the way that you can basically tell was just like, if you can hear Randy's tone. So if you hear that tone, ladies, your man has to take a dump. 
Probably. Or number one, but probably number two. Yeah, I don't know that I picked up the tone necessarily. He seemed helpful to me. He was trying to get you your stick of butter or... <laughs> oh, poor Scott. <laughs> It's so sad, you know? It's like watching you try and speak another language you've never spoken before. Watching me do that? <laughs> yeah, you trying to talk about emotions? I know it's so foreign. They don't have it in the hentai porn that I watch. <laughs> it's all just tentacles. <laughs> it's fun to imagine this little boy in the audience trying to remember all the things he wants to look up when he gets home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think we can move on to the next voicemail. Um, Mark? Hey, babe, I'm in the car right now. Uh, I'm going to be a little late. i got to stop off at this gas station to take a big shit. Um, so I'll be anywhere from four to 45 minutes late. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I might send you a photo to show you the damage I've done. <laughs> okay, all right, see you later, babe. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so maybe you were right about the first one. I was absolutely right. Woo! Wow, she did it. She's teaching us so much. <laughs> um, but this voicemail is actually very concerning to me. What, it, it just proved your first one right. I right, that, obviously I was right, right? That's right? all it was, right? I was him, right, right? Him just reporting. Right. But actually, when you hear his tone... If you really focus in on the tone, he is feeling deeply lonely. And also on the surface, if you're listening to what he's talking about, he's taking a picture of his shit. Okay, when a guy takes a picture of his shit, I'm saying shit. <laughs> it's a cry for help. I Think I about it. I would agree. I don't know too many guys that are taking pictures of that. When men send each other pictures of what they've, the damage they've done, that is them looking for deep friendship. They're like, please, please be my friend. <laughs> please. It's locker room talk. So it's like showing you what's inside of me. <laughs> yeah, literally. Bearing... Your soul, almost, or your whole. Right. <laughs> wow, you're actually surprising me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we just met. <laughs> what do you got? What are these little socks you're wearing? <laughs> what, what color are they? Are they white? To match your little collar on your little jacket? <laughs> it's awesome. No, I, seriously, I love it. I heard the baby again. What? I heard the baby again. Are they enjoying this? It's impossible to tell. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we can probably move on to the next one. If you're ready. I'm ready. Are hey, Carissa, so I'm in the kitchen making dinner. I just had a couple of questions, uh, namely what time you're coming home. Because um, I, I got to time this out just right. I'm, do, I'm cooking your favorite, by the way, chicken-wrapped steak. So just uh, shoot me a text or give me a call. Let me know what time you're going to be back. Because I, I want it to be fresh out of the oven when you get here. Okay. Um, yeah, hit me up. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um... Chicken-wrapped steak. <laughs> What, describe the process. What is that exactly? Okay, so you take like a big chunk of chicken. <laughs> Just a big chunk. Yeah, like like a block of chicken. <laughs> you know, like when you cut a cut a piece of like raw chicken and it's like a block. And then basically what you do, <laughs> basically what you do is you take a, a steak, and you really just kind of slowly, slowly saw away at the chicken until it sort of looks like a taco. And then you take needle and thread, if you can believe it, and then you sew up the side. And then, it's pretty simple, you put it in the microwave 45 minutes. <laughs> so that's that's obviously, I mean, everybody here makes that. <laughs> That's not weird. Um, but 
this voicemail to me, if you really listen in on the tone, like obviously it sounds like he's just cooking me dinner. No, he's absolutely livid with me in that. Did you guys hear his tone? I mean, I'm sure you're all picking up, but he was so fur irate. Do you listen to these words I'm using tonight? Irate, furious. Yeah, I, I mean, I did hear a little like, hey, why aren't you home yet? Where are you? Right. You know, a little suspicion in his voice, uh, up until he's, when he said, peace. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say it was like just absolutely pure rage, if you really okay. listen. It, it, he was like just, you know, probably throwing things, like that's what it sounds like to me. Okay. And the way that I, you know, I'm, I'm like thinking in my head right now, being like, what did I do, you know? And honestly, it could be a lot of different things, like if I really think about it. Um, cause I had put him on like a no fly list recently <laughs> and I, I called the like to catch a predator people on him and then like we invited his parents over for dinner and I played human centipede. We were just talking about that. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so if, I'm sure everyone's really picking up on the tone now. We get it. And um, we can probably move on to the next one. <laughs> oh. oh, whoops. Oh, uh, sorry. Hey, Carissa, I think I butt-dialed you. <laughs> Love you, babe. Sorry about that. Nothing urgent. Okay, talk to you later. Love ya. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that... That's just a butt dial. That's an accident. <laughs> silly, silly, hot Scott. <laughs> no, he's cheating on me. When a man tells you that he loves you, run. He's cheating on you. Absolutely, like no doubt about it. Why would he be that nice? Why would he bust out such big words all of a sudden? It feels to me like you feel, if I could just sort of analyze you, it feels like yeah. you feel you're undeserving of love. And, is, I mean, is that ringing any sort of emotional bells? My God, you're so hot, but you're so dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> what? I'm not sure which you're more wrong on. <laughs> <laughs> look, I can't even look at you again. I'm like cream my jeans. So I just want to say like, no, when a man tells you he loves you, ladies, say it with me, run. Wow, so many people said it. <laughs> you didn't give, first of all, you got to remind them what they're saying. <laughs> ladies, <laughs> say it with me. Get out of the relationship. Oh, no, too early. <laughs> He's cheating on you. He's cheating on you. This is... This oh, my God, I can't. <laughs> so fucking hot. Shit. All right. This is bad advice. This is, uh, you know... Uh, I don't think anyone... You ladies in the audience, come on. This is not something that we should... This, oh we shouldn't God. be heeding this sort of advice. You're obviously an emotionally stunted young woman who... <laughs> yeah. Emotionally and physically... <laughs> <laughs> you're short is what I'm saying. This is the thing that I've learned about Scott by, by listening to him online. Every time a woman is on the, his, his show, he's like, oh, you're so small. Why are you so tiny, little woman? <laughs> and because I became a feminist earlier today, I can speak on all behalf of women and say, Scott, I'm big. I'm really big. <laughs> Woo! There we go, they're livening up. Go girls, go get it. Go and get it, girls. Let's go girls. <laughs> Women, we love them, but we hate them when they're younger. Let's go, girls. I'm going out tonight, <laughs> feeling all right. I'm going to let it all hang. What's that part in that one song where it all stops and... Oh, where she goes, it stops and she goes, okay. So you're Brad Pitt. 
That don't impress me much. Uh, uh, um. It don't impress me much. No, it don't. Men. <laughs> so you're saying if Brad Pitt were to walk in here right now? I'd go like this. I would go, okay. So you think you're Brad Pitt? That don't impress me. <laughs> uh, uh, um. What if, uh, for example, a rocket scientist should show up? I would probably say something like, okay, so you think you're a rocket scientist? <laughs> that don't impress me much. Uh, uh, um. We have one more. Um, we one have more one voicemail? More. Okay, let's hear the last voicemail from Randy Studs. Uh, Carissa, what kind of scandalous duplicity is happening? I went to look for my passport and I couldn't find it, so I checked my email to see if I left myself a note. All my emails have been deleted, and somebody hacked into my bank account. What the hell's going on, Dafouk? You need to square this up with me, okay? I know you had some kind of hand in this. Bad things don't just randomly happen to me. There's always some kind of nefarious element, and it always comes back to you. So give me a call and tell me why you did this and where my passport is. God damn it. Surprise he didn't end with peace. So did you hear that? I heard a lot of accusations that have been leveled against you. And, and to be quite frank, they're scandalous and duplicitous. He's madly in love with me. He's obsessed with me. Did you hear that? Everything he said, all the details, the tone, the way he remembered that I deleted his emails and I took his IDs and I called the FBI on him. He didn't, he didn't mention that. Oh, well, he hasn't gotten there yet. Um, this man loves me, and you can hear it. Right, ladies? <laughs> we learned so much today, didn't we? And all it took was one simple little lesson with me. And yeah, I am gonna fuck probably this guy in this shirt later. <laughs> but when you find a man who cares about you, you will know by the way that he yells at you about bad stuff that you've done. <laughs> Legitimate bad stuff. What, what, what does the FBI think that Randy did? <laughs> I told him that he, I told them that he was um, the director of Human Centipede. <laughs> and they said they've been looking for that man for a very long time. All right, well, I don't know that we should be taking your advice, but thank you so much for giving it to us. You're welcome. Carissa, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys all after the show. <laughs> Can you stick around? Absolutely, hottie. Okay, enough. <laughs> wow. Ooh, blue phone case. Damn. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> wow. Are those, what are those shoes? What are they? Nike? Adidas? I, think they're, I believe they're ASICs and they're two different sizes, so I can have a brace on under one of them. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I didn't even see that brace. I love a man with an injury. <laughs> Let's go, girls. Let's go, girls. Oh, so you think you're a man with an injury? Oh, so you think you're wearing white socks? That don't impress the meme. Actually, it does, though. It does. People don't wear enough white socks. Sorry, I'll shut up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just, I, I want to give you room to... Aw, generous. <laughs> He's being manipulative. Did you hear his tone? Come on, all right. Well, I'm going to manipulate the next guest coming out on this stage. Sounds good. Manipulating the situation so that they will come out on stage, meaning I'm going to introduce them. Can I play them on? Sure, well, yeah. After you introduce them? Of course, how are you going to do that? Is it, we'll we'll see. Shania Twain. <laughs> Um, I mentioned a police officer is coming out here. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. We're all cool, right? 
we're not cool? Um, he's been on the show before, though. I think you'll like them. Uh, please welcome back to the show, McGruff the Crime Dog. Do, 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 do. Let's go, girls. Do, 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 do. Let's go, girls. Now, first of all, Scott, hello. Thank you for getting that out of the way. Thank you. Hello. We had to do it. We had to complete it or everyone <laughs> we, would go home freaking out. He didn't we, say, let's go, girls. We had to do it. Now, first of all, you said I was a police officer, got a lot of booze. <laughs> ACAB, Scott, I'm not a cop. You're not a cop. No. <laughs> Cops are trash, Scott. We're defunding them all over the country. <laughs> but wait, aren't you a bastard? I am a bastard. I don't know about that. <laughs> That's what you call a male dog, a bastard. <laughs> Any male dog. Any male dog. Just go up to it and call it a bastard. Yep. See how it reacts. Female dog, bitch. Male dog, bastard. <laughs> now, Scott, I hate the cops, but I also hate crime, Scott. The eternal conundrum. How do, how do you, what do you do when we take How do you reconcile cops? those? Well, Scott, that's why I'm here. By the way, thank you for wearing your nicest trench coat. Thank you. <laughs> My nice cartoon trench coat. <laughs> yeah, everything you're, you are a cartoon. Nobody freaked out when I came out here. I am a walking cartoon dog. I look like a detective from a noir. <laughs> you're, you're a cartoon and yes. you're also wearing cartoon clothes. That's true. I think my socks are real socks, though. I had to buy them. Oh, okay. There was a mix-up at the airport. I had a socks bag. They lost my socks bag. A full socks bag. I've been traveling all over the country, Scott. They lost my socks bag. I said, I gotta go to, like, a Nordstrom Rack or something, get some new socks, so I have cartoon clothes, human socks. Well, thank you. Thank you for dressing up. You look great. Thank you, But, Scott. yeah, how do you reconcile these two things? Uh, 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 because obviously you hate crime. What, what was your deal? You had commercials? Yes, I used to do a series of commercials <laughs> in the 80s and early 90s where I was telling kids to look out for crimes, Scott. Just to look out for Yeah. But then I disappeared for a while because I went down to South America to do some wet work, Scott. <laughs> I, please forgive me, yes. McGruff. Yes. Um, I'm trying very hard not to have a psychotic break <laughs> because you are a, a yeah. sentient cartoon, but I believe you advised children not so much to look out for crime yes. as to take a bite out of it. That's true. <laughs> Did want them to take a bite out of crime. But first you gotta look out for it. That's step one. Touche. If you see something, take a bite out of something. That's exactly right. Amen. Hell yeah. She's horny, is she? I was going to say, looking good, Dow. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't deal with that. Lassie would be so pissed. Lassie? Lassie's my ex-wife, of course. Oh, right, 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 right. I mean, the I'm actually... She took my house recently. Your dog house? Yes. So I'm living with Snoopy. Oh, no. He, At he, least he, he's always upstairs. He's a, he always sleeps upstairs. So he said, you could use the dog house. There'd be a little yellow bird coming in and out. Don't mind the bird. I think the bird's name is Woodstock. <laughs> I think so. I could. I might have to Wikipedia that later. But of course, I, I want kids to look. I heard there were some children in the audience. Is there... There, there's definitely one 12 year old boy and yes. one three month old baby. It's okay. a family show. Okay. <laughs> Keep it clean, okay? Well, the three month old probably doesn't know what the fuck is going on right now. But let me tell you for this 12 year old boy, wherever you are, you're about to get an education. <laughs> if I'm directing all of this at you. I believe that ship has sailed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Port of call, already gone. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> let me tell you something. I, it, it, to this 12-year-old child, I, I want you to go around, and if you see any crime, like, for instance, here's a big crime. I've, I've been traveling around the country, and here's a crime I've been seeing. 
if you're on a plane, little 12 year old boy, <laughs> and you see some people get up out of their seats when the seatbelt sign is on, I want you to find some sharp piece of metal, maybe it's from your seat, <laughs> snap it off. I want you to knock on the, the, the door of the cockpit and say, I'm a little boy, I just want a tour of the cockpit. <laughs> when they let you in there, hold the, hold the piece of metal to the pilot's neck and say, land the plane, there's been a crime. McGruff. And then when you're on the runway, it might be, look, it might become a little bit of a hostage situation, which is fine. I want you to ask the stewardess for a pen and paper, and I want you to write a letter to me at Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. McGruff, these people, are, they're just going into the bathroom to join the Mile High Club or something. Can't you leave them alone? What are they doing? <laughs> that's what you think people are doing when they're getting out of their seat. Hell yeah, that's what you think, Scott. Okay, Kayla. <laughs> Another Google search on the pile. <laughs> Mile High Club, little 12-year-old boy. What does that mean? McGruff, I, I feel there's maybe a tiny flaw in your plan. That yes. When the child starts to write the letter to you, yes. he cannot do this without relinquishing his weapon, mm. and he will soon be overtaken before he gets a chance to finish the letter. You gotta write quick. Listen, little boy, <laughs> practice your handwriting at home so you can write really quick, scribble it. There's been a crime on a plane. You could pre-write the letter, maybe, you before you get on the plane. Pre-write the letter. Say, Scruff McGruff, there's been a crime. The crime is blank. Fill it in. <laughs> Make sure you always have wet stamps. You don't have time to lick them. <laughs> where, where, where are you gonna get so many wet stamps? I have a lot of them. <laughs> you gotta go to the store, you wet them, you put them in your pocket. <laughs> Scott, do you want there to just be crimes all over the place? Is that what you're telling me? I don't, uh, this, it doesn't seem like this is a huge crime that would necessitate landing a plane in a, I don't know, we, we, uh, do you have any other crime tips I for do, us? I Scott, but I'm a little confused by you. By me? Yeah. By me. Do you like crime, Scott? <laughs> I mean, a little crime's okay, right? I mean, you know, we can look the other way for some stuff, right? You know? All right. Who, who wooed right now? Because I got some zip ties in the back. I'll put you guys in my trunk. Also, I, I feel like I heard someone in response to a little bit of crime is okay yell out arson. <laughs> I can agree with. Austin's pretty fine. <laughs> Set something on fire. Who cares? It's a fire. It's one of the elemental we all elements. Need, yeah, we need it for warmth. We need fire for warmth. It should cancel itself out. Do you want to know about my wet work in South America, Scott? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, we've never really talked about we've it. We've never really much. talked about it. You know, a lot of it's been coming back to me. A lot of it was wiped from my memory, of course, because I oh, was yeah. winter soldiered, of course. Oh, so they, yeah, they... <laughs> The U.S. government, of course, programmed me to be a killing machine. <laughs> and, of course, my key phrase, which I hesitate to say, but I think I might have worked my way out of it, my key phrase was E-I-E-I-O. Oh, no, that's very common. Yeah, as soon as, I said, as soon as I heard it, I was like, who do you want me to kill? And they sent me down there with the other dog spendables. The, do the dog spendables? That's right. Who, who are we talking? Well, dogs are trained killing machines. Sure. I mean, look, we've got Brian from Family Guy. <laughs> Spuds McKenzie, is he involved? No, or? no, no. I, who's that? <laughs> he was the Budweiser dog? I'd never heard of him. We have Ralph, of course. <laughs> who's Ralph? I think he's like a Muppet. <laughs> oh, Ralph. Yes, yes. He was, our, he was our demolitions expert. He was. I don't know what he did before that. <laughs> We have Odie, of course. Oh, Odie, yeah. Yeah, Odie. He went down there and he would like go into like a drug dealer's camp and he'd say, hello, boys. And they'd all be like, oh, there's a hot woman over there. They start walking over, then I'd blow their heads off. The surf ninjas tactic. The classic surf ninjas tactic. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that, Scott? I have, yeah. Is that a Scott it has seen. seen? Yes, that's right. Interesting. Why are you guys clapping? <laughs> they know that, but they don't know Carissa. <laughs> it's like, what? Interesting. Of course, Dogbert was there. Dog oh, Dogbert. Yes. yes. Dogbert. 
Uh, let's see, who else was there? Let me look at my hand. Oh, Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> he was there. He was our scuba guy. A scuba, really? Yeah, the, he, uh, would, he would... Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. That's what it stands for. Yeah. He'd swim in, you know, he'd come out of the water, he'd see some drug dealers, and he'd say, hello, boys. <laughs> the surf ninjas tactic. We did a lot of surf ninja stuff now that I think about it. <laughs> Well, Scott, you know, I have been traveling around the country, and... Uh, oh, good. I, I have. It's been fun. Have you been traveling around the country? We, the well, we have. We've been doing this tour for the fine folks in America and also uh, up there in Canada. Up there in Canada. Well, Scott, mm -hmm. there's been a crime that I've been witnessing in many hotels I've been staying in. Really? That's right. And this... Where's the 12-year-old boy? To you, 12-year-old child. <laughs> if you're staying in a hotel and you're sitting in the lobby... And you see someone go up to the sort of uh, service desk or something, the concierge, if you will, and they say, excuse me, can I have a late checkout? Here's what you do. <laughs> Lock all the doors. Pull the fire alarm. Hopefully there's a sprinkler. Find an ax. <laughs> and I want you to chop into some electrical cords, wherever you can find them. Make sure the electrical cords dangle into the pools of water on the ground. Electrocute cute, whoever you see. Go to the concierge and say, excuse me, do you have a pen? And then I want you to write a letter to me at Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Um. Yes, Verna, you have a question? I, I, yes, um... Uh, I didn't detect a crime. <laughs> um, it just seemed to be a question. A late, a late checkout? I mean, that's crazy. But There's the, people who are trying to check in. You want to check out? But the, the person, the concierge, if you will, could just say no. But the, you see, that's the thing. When you're trained as a concierge, then you're not allowed to say no. I don't think that's <laughs> true. I don't know if this requires a child to pull a Pete Seeger at the Newport Jazz Festival and... <laughs> It's absolutely true. What are you talking about, Fred? <laughs> you haven't done any late checkouts recently, have you? I have on occasion requested a late checkout, yes. I got some zip ties in the back for Verna. <laughs> I, I feel attacked right now. You guys think these aren't crimes? The, these seem like minor annoyances that you're taking umbrage with. No, I think everything you said makes perfect sense. I'm totally 100% on board. I like her now. <laughs> I like you too. I do. Wait, just so you know, you know I have a little doggy dick, right? I don't have a doggy dick? I have a little doggy dick. It's not like the, you could have normal sex with these guys. You have sex with me, it's going to be weird. I'm, <laughs> I'm literally 100% on board with everything you said. Great. Literally wouldn't change a thing. Great. <laughs> Great. Look at Scott looking over. He's like so jealous. He's like, oh, they're going to do it and not with me. <laughs> And Scott, you do look pretty jealous right now, I gotta say. <laughs> There's another big crime. I'm, I'm just into hentai, that's all. <laughs> if you don't have tentacles, I Since don't care. Since last night, that's your big thing. <laughs> no, it's been, a, it's been a good week or two of him being in hentai. <laughs> well, Scott. <laughs> you know Scott. what, I, I, maybe these aren't the big crimes. I, that's not the type of crime you would... Or crimes. Yeah. What are you, what you saying? <laughs> or crimes. Okay, there, there are crimes in my book, but there is one crime we all need to be watching out for. What's that, McGruff? Where's that 12-year-old child? <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me out there. Let's say you go home to your house. Your parents are making dinner. Maybe they're making turkey. Maybe they're making chicken. Chicken wrap steak. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. I have eaten a rat one time, but didn't taste like steak. Let's say your dad walks into his office and he's in there, he's doing a little bit of business and he opens his safe and inside it, inside this safe, there are some classified documents that have been taken from the White House. Let me tell you something, if you see that, first of all, you need to Lock your mom in the basement, tell her you don't want to see what's about to happen. <laughs> Hopefully you have a basement, if not, I don't know, you improvise. I want you to take your dad, 
shove them in the safe. I don't care how small the safe is. <laughs> Start pushing from the butt to break it. If, if his neck breaks, he was the one who broke the law. <laughs> Push him in the safe. And you know when you close the safe, you really gotta spin around that, that little knob on it so no one can open it. And then you gotta get, I don't know, like a big like tractor trailer. Load the safe onto the tractor trailer. Drive to the closest ocean, drop it in. <laughs> Make sure there's a chain attached. It's gonna look a lot like a David Copperfield type magic show. <laughs> drop him in, wait a few minutes, and then you gotta go over to somebody on the port and say, hey, hey, excuse me, do you have a pen I could write with? <laughs> Your hands might be wet from all this stuff you were doing in the, in the ocean. Try them off, make sure they're dry. And then, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna take the pen, you're gonna kill the guy who gave it to you. <laughs> Just kidding, that was a test. You're gonna write a letter to me at Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Now this one I agree with. <laughs> I'm glad. You don't have any classified documents in your house, Scott, do I, I mean, none so that you would really give a shit about. I mean, you know. But there are some that someone might give a shit about? The I mean, CBB nuclear codes, maybe? <laughs> no, of course, uh, I don't keep anything classified. Hmm. What do you keep in your safe, Scott? Just declassified documents. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> so you can go to your public library and find whatever documents sure, are in your safe? Sure, yeah, they're all public records. That's yeah. great, Scott. Yeah. <sighs> Scott, I, I'm having fun out here, but I am thinking about my ex-wife pretty hard. Lassie is Lassie. your ex-wife, yeah. Are you, you're the ultimate snitch, of course. <laughs> in, what, in what way? Well, she's always telling people that they're trapped in wells and stuff. You know, she's going to people, there's someone trapped in a well, barking. The ultimate she's trying snitch. to help. I mean, it's usually people in she's precarious situations. She's the ultimate situations. snitch, Scott, and that's why I married her. <laughs> you like that? I love snitches. Oh, that's right. I mean, you want of course, little snitches, kids to snitch. Snitches get my kisses. <laughs> I miss her, Scott, but... Uh, yeah, why did you guys break up? I mean... Well, she was fucking Clifford the Big Red Dog, Scott. No. And let no. me tell you something. He's big. <laughs> and he's red. <laughs> he's a dog. And he's a dog. I gotta meet this Clifford. Okay. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. You seen the posters for his movie? He's eating a manhole like it's a pizza. Absolutely. And to me, that's a crime. He's eating a manhole like a pizza. I don't think that happened, Scott. <laughs> I think you made that up. But I'll tell you, you know what he's doing a lot of in his movie? Jaywalking. Well, he's a big red dog. He's not. He's untrained. He's he constantly know. jaywalking. I saw the trailer for that movie, and I was just gripping my friggin' zip ties so hard. I think you're just upset that Lassie is not coming no. home. Okay, yeah. all right. But this guy's a freaking criminal, Scott. Hmm. Let me tell you, Scott. Do me a favor. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> when we get off stage, I want you to say E I E I O to me and then direct me to kill Clifford the Big Red Dog. That way I, I have no responsibility. I was under a trance, if you will. You can't just say it to yourself like you No, just... no, no, I, I have said it a few times. It hasn't really kicked in. Yeah, you need a different pitch of yeah, voice. I need, yeah, I need someone, I need a human to say. Okay, well, if at any point in tonight's show I need you to kill anyone, <laughs> okay. I know the trigger word. All right, but I want to kill Clifford the Big Red Dog. I don't okay, want to well, kill any of this fine audience here in Portland, Maine. We can combine it. One for me, one for you, like Scorsese would do? The Scorsese rule. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I thought we could do that. Ah, oh, Scott. Hey, McGruff. Yeah. Do you know Air Bud? I do know Air Bud. Is he a nice guy, or...? He was part of the Dog Spendables. And we lost him down there. Oh, no. Air Bud flew our helicopter. Because, of course, there's no rule against a dog flying there's a helicopter. There's nothing in the rule book. And uh, we were uh, taking down a drug dealer at his mansion. And uh, drug dealer had a rocket launcher. 
You gotta factor that in. We didn't think about rocket launches, Scott. Well, that one's on Santa's little helper. He was our recon guy. Santa's the little helper from The Simpsons. Yes. <laughs> I know all the fictional dogs. <laughs> sure, <yeah. laughs> Do you have them written on my hand right now? What about Ribsy? Who the fuck is that? Oh, you don't know Ribsy? I don't know Ribsy at all. From Ramona Quimby? <laughs> and Beezus? What? Who is it? You, <laughs> such a skinny dog, his ribs were sticking through, so they called him Ribsy. Vernon, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> it's so... Uh, do you know Beezus? <laughs> I know Beezus and Mero of that <laughs> talk show group. <laughs> Didn't they just break up their show, ended on Showtime? <laughs> Sad. What Sweet. about uh, the Fraser dog? Oh, yeah. Well, Eddie. Eddie. The Fraser dog. Played for... by Moose. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie played by Moose. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, Eddie played by Moose was kind of like Charlie to our Charlie's Angels. Right. <laughs> he'd call us, we'd pick up, he'd bark into a thing, and we'd say, we've got an assignment. And um, Marmaduke? Yeah, Marmaduke, you know, Marmaduke works in a post office. He, he's, not in the, in, he's not in the wet work life, if you will. <laughs> he works in a post office, got a great job. <laughs> he's a post office guy, what can I say? <laughs> Postal dog, you know. What about Instagram dogs? Instagram dogs? Yeah. Oh, that one dog with the tongue can't go into his mouth? Yeah. <laughs> I saw that dog in a doggy orgy one time. Most popular dog at the place. Don't look that up, little 12 year old boy. <laughs> look up the dog, but not the other stuff. I hope they've left by now. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But, uh, you know. I, I want to make sure that everyone in this audience goes home and they're equipped to fight crime. So here's some things you're going to need to buy from your local CBS. Wow, we have a whole list to come. I like it. Zip ties. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Classic. Garbage bags. Done. Have it. Have both. A dinner plate that you can crack in half and use as a shop <laughs> object. Check. You got, you got that? Yeah. A big net. <laughs> like a butterfly net or just a huge net? I'd say it's more like a, just a net you could drop from a tree if someone's, you know, sure. caught in it. They're like, I can't get out of this net. Yeah, like RRR style. Like RRR style. Yeah. There's no dogs in that movie, but there's a big lion. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch movies and you're like, no dogs? It you... kind of pisses me off. Representation matters. You know what my fa you, have, have we seen the movie Dog? No. <laughs> no. You know, I couldn't believe it was real either. <laughs> it's a dog. It's a movie with the magic mic, I think. Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum. <laughs> and his friend's, his friend passes away, and he's like, you got to take the dog somewhere, and the dog's in it. Anyways, bad movie. <laughs> dog doesn't do anything cool. He just fucking barks, chases after balls and stuff. He's a bad dog, and I'm a good dog. By the way, I brought you guys out some waters earlier. Nobody pet me on the head and said, good doggy, good I'm doggy. Sorry, I'm sorry. Here oh, we go. Yeah, Furious. Yeah. Thank good you. Good doggy. Thank you. Good Thank boy. You. Good Thank boy. You. Thank you. Good boy. Good My boy. tail's wagging big who's, and long. Who's a good boy? Hey, Thank Scott, you. come over here. I'll give you a little pet. All right, Carissa. <laughs> <laughs> she might be too horny for me to sit next to. She's in heat. She's in heat? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I am a bitch, so. <laughs> <laughs> Much like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, she's in heat. Have you seen that? <laughs> Have you seen that Heat 2, the book, is kind of everywhere now? Yeah, everyone's reading Heat 2. I was at the airport at, like, a Hudson News, and they had just had Heat 2 right next to the register, like, I was supposed yeah. to buy that. <laughs> Hudson, <laughs> Hudson News, my most trusted news source. Gotta trust them. <laughs> The, the lamestream media. Nah, I can't trust that, but the Hudson, the Hudson News. News. Oh, yeah. I can get some drama memes, some Cheetos. <laughs> but yeah, the giant movie. Giant Waters? Yeah, Giant Waters. The movie Heat didn't work for me. There were no dogs in Heat in it. <laughs> Just a lot of stuff that honestly reminded of my time of South America. Yeah. What about the movie A Bronx Tale? The movie A Bronx Tale. Let's see. Is there a dog in that? I don't think so, but you hear a movie with tail in it, and you, you know. Like Shark's Tale? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, McGruff the Crime Dog, everyone.
I might be the first guest who's gotten a full-on shut-up from Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I told a guest to fuck off the other day. Oh, okay, night. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. it was a woman. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you guys all on the show, and you know how we usually close Excuse the me, show yeah. with a uh, traditional song. Sorry to bother you guys. Over just, here. Oh. Did I see a fucking golden retriever go through this? Did the area? baby grow up? Has there been a golden retriever? You guys see one go through this area right here? Someone, on, someone on the Lost mic. My two fucking. It, 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 it's like the end of summer. It's the worst. It's the worst day to do it. And is it, you fucking lose your two golden retrievers. This is a fucking horrible situation. I, have you guys seen two golden retrievers go through here? Please, somebody fucking tell me. You've seen the two golden retrievers go through here. They're not huge. They're not like the big box head ones. They're small headed. They're fucking, they they fucking look like they're coked out of their mind. They've been, I lost them in Medford about three days ago. I can't fucking find them. It's tearing my life apart. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt this show. I feel like a fucking hey, asshole hey, hey, right now. Hey, wait wait till this guy sees here. McGruff. He's going to freak out. <laughs> hey. Sorry to interrupt. No, don't fucking clap for me. No, don't do it. He came equipped with a little cushion for the stool. Dude, my wife's on the rag. This is just part of it. Okay, listen. Listen. Couple days ago, and again, sorry to interrupt. Hey, hey, you Pudge. Can't... Pudge. Yeah, it's me. I'm back. Hey, listen. I, I've been running nonstop, literally on my feet from Boston since we ended... <laughs> On what was it? Tuesday night? I don't even keep. I don't use calendars. I don't believe in them. I'm Catholic. <laughs> Listen, that's the way I am. But I'm looking for them. I don't know where they are. That's it. Have you seen them? I'll ask. It's a simple question. I'm asking. Have you seen? I'm the simple guy from Boston. Have you seen my golden retrievers? It's simple. Yes or no. I'll get the fuck out of your way. Yeah, this is Pudge, everyone. Oh, Pudge. Jesus Christ. Pudge. No. Pudge interrupted our show in Boston on Monday night. Interrupted your show? Y yes. Interrupted your show. How would you characterize it? Oh, I'd characterize it as a normal guy looking for his two retrievers. <laughs> retrievers, that's right. Sweet Caroline is, the not, is my girl, and Welcome to America is my boy. I, I thought it was their coming to America. <laughs> no, that guy died. This is a new one. You got a new dog between then and now, and you lost him already. Dude, they, dogs are crazy. Hey, by the way, I am a dog. You haven't even looked over here That's to see. That's the reason I'm here. This is the fucking truth, and I'm going to lay it down flat for you. <laughs> I'm in Medford, right? I take an Uber to Newburyport. <laughs> I stop at a 7-Eleven. I just crush four tall boys. An, a, a Michelob Ultra, a Budweiser, just regular. I, honestly, a zero alcohol O'Doul's. <laughs> In retrospect, a fucking mistake. So I'm pissing myself on my left to Portsmouth. I go to Portsmouth. Pudge. I hung out. What was the fourth tall boy? <laughs> Dude. We're in New England. It was a fucking October fest. <laughs> okay, let's see. Or, I'm sorry, we're in Maine. It's a shipyard. Right? No, who cares? So I am get to Portsmouth. I walked to Kittery. And by the way, I'm not a shopper. Those outlets. You know, how, you know what kind of pants you can find there? Are you a pants guy? Huge pants guy. Did you find yourself in need of some pants recently? No, dude, come on. No, I'm never in need of pants. Pants is uh, for shit. L listen, I, I, listen, I'm here. I know you guys are in doing your comedy show. And you're trying to suck me into it, and you did it last time. I'm not going to do it this time. I'm here for one reason and one reason You only. grabbed a microphone. 
Dude, I told you I've been taking comedy classes and this is practice. This <laughs> just happened to hook into your fucking system about 400 yards away. And I was like, what? And I heard dog, McGruff or something. And I was like, maybe they're here. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm here. Uh, you're not my dogs. I'll get out of your way. Let me crawl down, back <laughs> off this, whatever this thing is in front. I would be careful now, to be perfectly honest. Honestly. This fucking sucks, you guys. And I don't know why people come to watch you, because honestly, from 400 yards away, I was like, it's just a bunch of shitheads talking to each other. <laughs> why do they do it? Why do they do it? Why do people come and, and, and watch it? it? Just do me a favor. Text me on, on my phone. None of us have your number. <laughs> we, we don't know you. I'll give you 310-980-4053. I got it. Santa Monica area code? Text me. If Punch. everybody could pull out your phone and text me right now. 310. <laughs> Actually, this is true. <laughs> He's coming back. This is true. Do you want us to bleep that out of the episode <laughs> when we release it? <laughs> Much like a certain nah, address dude. that another guest said. Dude, it's a fucking T-Mobile number. Nobody's going to use that. <laughs> Who's got a phone? Do you have a phone? Anybody get a phone? Can you put someone get phone someone for a give second. Pudge your phone? Oh, no, I, I I went. That's a cute. Look at that! It's a fun. It's a cute little dog on the front. Hey, it ain't no golden retriever, <laughs> but it's pretty cute. Do you have a code on this thing? Do you? Okay, put it a fucking code in. <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is what happens. Okay, what's <laughs> This is what happens. You're from Brunswick. Are you from fucking Brunswick or Bath? Bath or Brunswick? Bath? Oh, fucking Hyde Academy guy over here. Okay. Okay. Honestly, last my dogs were seen. Here, I'll come up here with this. <clears throat> What's your name, my man? What's your name, bud? Because we're in this together now. What is your name? Chris. Okay. Chris what? <laughs> don't, don't, don't What's your last that. name? <laughs> Who's this recent call? Jesus. Let's fucking call him. <laughs> Pudge. Pudge, this is bordering on a crime right now. <laughs> Oh, so you're not doing it correctly. Dude, just give me... Listen, you'll get back to your show in a second. I got business to do. No one answered that one. So I'll give you... I'll give you a phone back. Just kidding. Who's Triangle Bear? <laughs> Dude, you guys must get crazy in the bedroom. Triangle Bear? Feels like that might be two numbers. Hold on. Okay, one more. I'll try one more. Listen, give me a fucking second, guys. If you guys could be quiet, it'd be fucking helpful. Hold on. Let's see if we get a ring. Oh, a ring ding. Hello? Hi. Hey, who's this? This, this is Chris's friend. Hey, Pudge. This is Chris's friend, Patch. Who's it? Don't make me ask again. Who's this? <laughs> Hi, have you seen my two golden retrievers? <laughs> okay. I don't know. She didn't... I don't think she answered. I don't know who I called. Okay, no. If you give me a second, let's very... <laughs> Very quickly, I just want to do that with every one of these motherfuckers down in the audience. And I figure, I figure sooner or later, we'll get it, right? Come on, give me a break. Punch, this... no one has said anything for like three minutes. Dude. We're letting you do it. I, no one said anything. Good, no, what, you, what is that supposed to mean? No, Jesus Christ, I feel bad. Honestly, I feel bad because I've interrupted your show twice and I do owe you an apology. So I want to just flat out say, I'm sorry. I'm just a guy looking for his fucking trevas. And if you guys 
Do you want me to sit here and shut shut up? We, I can we, do we that. want you to shut up. We don't want you to sit here. Don't. I oh, I'll fucking leave then. Let's go. You know what? Pudge, Pudge, I got a question for you. You said you were coming from a comedy class. Comedy class. What what are you learning there? What's the kind of thing you learn? Microphone holding. Right here. You might remember the last time I had some problems really holding did. my phone. My phone, M phone, or micro P. <laughs> that's just, that's industry. Oh, so you have a micro P. Yeah. So I've been working on, holding the phone, I've been working on crowd work. Like I can do crowd work, watch this. Like, yeah, do some crowd work for okay. us. Okay, hey, what's up? Hey, you guys look like a cute fucking stupid couple. All right. That's, Jesus come on. Christ. You guys together? You guys? Oh. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> the daughter. daughter. Yeah, they're not well, together. Well, I guess careful. you're together then, right? You made her. Where are you guys from? Portland. Portland, what part? Be fucking specific. And that's something in comedy they tell you. Be specific, <laughs> right? What part of Portland? Technically Cumberland. Oh, now it comes out. Cumberland. I used to, I love Cumberland Farms. You ever been to Cumberland Farms? Dude, here, and this is where the joke comes in. Watch this. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I love Cumberland Farms, but I don't get it. There's no farm. Seemed, one more, one wow, more. Wow, that's Slade. Seemed like it worked somehow. I don't one think more. I get it. One more. Sir in the green Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, what's your name? Billy. What'd you say? Billy? Billy? Oh, did we you? already talk to Billy? <laughs> <laughs> Shocking that he has the only shirt, like, that's, it's very bright. Awesome it's shirt. It's very bright. It's beautiful, though. I was tempted to trade for one second. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, who'd you come with tonight? I'm here by myself. By yourself. Here's the funny thing about being by yourself. Are, are you by yourself a lot, Pudge? I'm, no, I always come with my best friend. Wait a minute. That's myself. <laughs> All right. That's the stuff I'm learning. That's kind of that like... That was the joke. That's kind of my tight five right now that I... Uh, that's, uh, that was not even five minutes. That was like... That was it. Let's do one more. <laughs> Let's fucking do one more. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you calling it out that that wasn't a because I I'm one thing my coach taught me is I'm good at taking notes. What's your name? Huh? Oh no, I was talking to you. What's it, Amy? And you're here with your son, husband. Oh, for two. How long you guys been married? What's your anniversary date? Oh, dude, my Octo I was born on October 29th. That's 23 days apart. Two plus three is five. One short of a six pack. Let's get a drink. <laughs> this is the type of, no, and I'm working on it. I know it's not all funny, but they say be relatable. Be relatable, right? So that's what I'm, I'm fucking trying to do that. But it all, and I'm also distracted because Sweet Caroline and Welcome to America, they're, they're out there somewhere. And I'm, it is distracting to me. It is, it's hard. And I'm, I'm sure you're, McGruff, I'm, sh I almost want to ask you if you can help me find Yeah, it. I mean, maybe, yeah. do you have anything with their scent on it? I yeah. Mean, what? No. I don't, dude, no, 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 no. Somebody get me no. a pen, quick, I gotta write a letter to myself. <laughs> no. Okay. Dude, mm -hmm. don't let the audience hear this. Okay. <laughs> okay. But on the very tip of my dick mm -hmm. is the smell, that's the smell. Okay. Well, I smelled your dick the second you walked out. <laughs> oh. It's a dog thing. And I'm sorry to say, uh, they're nowhere near the theater. All right. Fair enough. I did my best. My best. Are you leaving, Pudge? Guess my best isn't good enough. Yeah, I'm fucking leaving. What do I got to do around here? What are you going to sit and bow with you guys or something? I'm not a performer. 
No, I'll do my own comedy shows someday, but for now, I'm fucking hitting the road. Let's go to Canada. It's a, that's the only place to go, by the way, from here in Maine. So have a great show. I think you're all very funny. Mm -mm. <laughs> Pudge, come back. No, I'm not coming Pudge, back. Pudge, come I on. Guarantee. Look, we got the, the fucking Apple Genius Bar up here. I don't know what the fuck going on there. They're selling iPods or something. <laughs> hey, you guys have fun, okay? You know, but you know what? He's coming back. This is what fucking pisses me off. Because <laughs> here I am, I come all the way. By the way, I spent like six, seven hundred dollars on Ubers. And <laughs> one quick round of Concord Trailways from South Portland to Portland, which was a waste. I was a waste of money. But I, I just feel bad that I came all the way here and you guys don't appreciate that. I'm trying to do something good for humanity and you're just sitting here being clowns. What are you, what are you trying to do for humanity? What, what am I trying? I'm trying to recreate the American family system by bringing my, my golden retrievers back home. You can't understand that? Then you aren't fucking New Englanders because that's how we do things here, all right? Family first. Am I right? <laughs> Hey, you, did, you heard me. Am I right? <laughs> Sweet Caroline. Okay, yeah, see? Pudge, Pudge, how did the dogs get away? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. My neighbor, I think I said this. When my neighbor came over, she asked for a shot of gin. And I gave her a fucking gin. And we went at it. I said this, in my, I left the door open and I come out and Sweet Caroline and Welcome to America, they're fucking gone. Because they got things to do. You know, I actually listened to the other show that you were on yeah. um, because I love Scott, I support Scott. Yeah. Um, and it said that your daughter was missing too. Yeah, I lost my daughter four years ago on Christmas but I gave up on finding her. She's gone, she's gone. She's gone. How did she go? Like, what was the story of her going missing? Does it matter? <laughs> it's kind of, it yeah. does matter. It doesn't feel like it matters to me. I'm focused on other things right now. But she's gone. She's gone. And honestly, this is a true thing. And I, I saw a psychologist about this. Sometimes when trauma is so heavy, you forget things. That's true. It's true. But you know what? She's, she, she's out there somewhere, and I'll find her again. But she was old. My dogs are uh, young or semi-young, you know? Is this the stand-up right now? Yeah. <laughs> Can you stop interrupting me? Yeah, sorry. My dogs are young, but semi-young. You guys know that? Like, you know when you're like 25 years old, and you're like, ah, I feel old. And then all of a sudden, you're 35 years old, and you're like, mm, I wish I was 25 again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so where'd you get that shirt? Where's that from? Is that an H&M? Is it a J. Crew? Is it a Gap? Go, somebody go ahead and look at the tag on it. Let's not guess when we have the information in front of us. Can somebody look at the back tag of his shirt, please? This is the stuff people are interested in. Fucking brag it. <laughs> All right, okay, handmade. Hand, somebody handmade that? How do you hand make a, this is still part of the stand up. How do you hand make a shirt? You, what do you, you take pieces of cloth and put them together? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still pounding that one out. I don't know if it's. It hasn't landed have, yet with an audience, but... Since you lost your daughter, have you gone to therapy, tried to work any of this stuff out? I, mean, I do a lot of self-therapy. I do a ton what, of yoga. What, yeah, what is self-therapy? What do you mean? That, yoga. That's not therapy. Are you kidding me? Fruit on the bottom? I'm st you guys could shut up. I'm still doing my bits. 
Does your act depend on someone asking you if you've been to therapy? I gotta say, I felt compelled to ask it as if I had no control over what was happening. No, come on, guys. Hey, you know, there's a time to laugh and there's a time to get down to fucking business. And I want to find my dogs. That's it. I do love that you keep resetting by sitting on the stool for about one second and then... No, do you know that my doctor... This is true. There he goes. No, I have a reverse prolapsed anus. No. Reverse? It's reverse. It's gotten sucked out. It's literally in my throat. I So, I... No, I have... If I sit for more than, like, four or five seconds, I'll literally shit in my own mouth. That's true. That's true. What's your name, sir? Wayne Stock. Wayne Stock. What's your name? What is it? Chris? Chris? We get, what is it? everybody fucking named Chris here? <laughs> Chris Wayne, St- Wayne Stock. What's Wayne Stock mean? What's that mean? <laughs> oh. That's what, I never saw it. <laughs> I never saw it. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne, Wayne's World 1 was great, though. Right, guys? Okay, listen. <laughs> Excuse me, the future is female down here. Future is female. I That's agree. A great shirt, I and this say. is something, you guys, this is something I learned. You endear yourself to the audience. Watch mm. this. Right. Watch this. The future is female. I agree. Women are equal to men. Where are you fucking going? <laughs> Where the hell is that guy? That guy's like, I'm done with my. See, this is why I don't love comedy, because people can just get up and walk away. Future is female. Yeah, I agree. The future is female. Men and women should be on the same page. If I want to use the same toilet as a woman, I should be able to, right? <laughs> men, women are just as good as men, right? Yeah, I agree with that. That question doesn't go over as well in Maine. That, <laughs> you do that out in the West, it's a big cheer, but over here they're like, I don't know. We'll figure it out <laughs> down the road. Anyway, so that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm doing. I'm finding my dogs. You guys doing okay? This stool is like a little wireless charger. <laughs> <laughs> like a mag safe. He sits on it and then he oh. gets a little more juice. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. What's, up? What's going on over here and there? Oh well, that's backstage. Dude, you guys think you're fancy? You got your own fucking trash cans in the thing? In the... Oh, we gotta, if we have trash, we gotta throw it out in a separate thing. Who are you over here? What's going on? Just, just... Let's see what's happening. <laughs> fucking... Where are you going? There's crap over here. Oh, shit. There's doors everywhere. Like playing fucking Pac-Man over here. There's... Oh, hey, what's up, guys? No, honestly, I am really going to leave this time. <laughs> I got to go. By the way, you know how pissed my wife is at me? I've been gone for this long. Wait, She's you're pissed. married? You never mentioned your wife? I'm married. Yeah, if kids, I'm Catholic. I'm fucking married till the end. Yeah, that's what you do. Hey, excuse me for asking you to move your fucking legs out of the way. <laughs> All right. You know what? <laughs> Hey, it's been real. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. I'll see you guys later. Hey, give me a hug, buddy. No, it's fucking. Okay. Stick in your seat, though. Stay in your seat. Guys. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, this is my dad, you guys. That's my dad right there. It's my dad. Hey. He, oh, what? Who the fuck is that? Okay, I'll see you guys later. Honestly, I'm going to leave. I'll be back another time. I'm really, I'm fucking out of here. Okay? He's so, he's so close to Bye. the exit. No, I'm done. This is, I'm just, I'm so done. much suspense. Bye. Is he actually going to leave? No. He's gone through the door. Oh, Do you guys have a here pet he peeve? Here he comes. No, really? He's Quick. back. He's back. Uh, this is the last thing. He's and jogging I swear. back. <laughs> God, my back hurts. <laughs> Your back? Well, you've been climbing on it. My back stage. hurts so bad. My back hurts so bad. Somebody give me five fingers. 
Somebody give me five fingers. <laughs> Jeez. I was Pudge, like, uh, may I ask in, in the search yeah. for your dogs, have you gone on stage on any other shows besides this one? Dude, I've hit so many. I've weirdly hit three Mac Marin podcasts. <laughs> I thought he locked the gates before each show. No, he does, but I'm fucking tough as shit. I'm from <laughs> Boston, dude. I badged through. You know, you go where you got to go. You do what you got to do. And I think that's what I'm saying here tonight. You do what you got to do to get your family back. And I'm going to get them back someday. I appreciate you guys even, like, sitting here and saying nothing while I go fucking ballistic. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know it's not easy being, like, who you guys are. You guys have riders. What? That's something I learned in comedy class, too. Do you have a writer? How would you learn that in comedy class? <laughs> That's a f Weirdly, that was the first thing we learned. Like, have a writer. So a writer is... I have four is, tall... When, yes. If I go do a show, it's four tall boys. I apologize for interrupting. <laughs> no, please. You know what? Normally, I accept apologies, but fuck you. Don't do that. Fuck <laughs> you. What you know, Pudge, we're running out yeah. of time here on the show. Oh, you're running out of time? <laughs> Do you, do you have any final words for this audience? I know you're, you're a man of... Yeah, if you see my dogs, if you see my golden... <laughs> no, not those kind of fun, final words. I mean, oh. words of advice. Words of advice for the, oh, 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 oh. the I crowd. Got you. I got you. Yeah. Take, stand you, up and take the stage. Okay. Okay. Because I know you don't like to sit for too long. No, I just shit in my own mouth. <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> Listen, no. I know there's been a lot of funny stuff set up here tonight. <laughs> And, you know, they're all sitting here, and they're like, Jesus, this guy's crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm just a guy <laughs> from Boston looking for his two golden retrievers. And if you see him, please call 310-980-4053. If everybody could do that, and if you want to, just text me right now and give me a status update of whether you know where it is. 310. This is cool, right? This always works out. Definitely. Do you have your phone on you? No. No, I lost it. <laughs> but that's it. That's it. That's all I got. I'm going to, I should get back on the road. I don't know where I'm going next, but you know where to find me, and I'm not going to give up till I find him. <laughs> Dude, it's the first three days. It's, it's, when do you see your wife? What's that? When do you see your wife? Because if you're on the road... She's a night nurse, so I don't see her light. She works during the night. We're going to open this up right now towards the end of the show. <laughs> I'll talk about it, but this is a big thing. And by the way, my wife and I, we haven't been... She's, I mean, she's hard to get along with, and we've had some trouble. You guys ever have a... a <laughs> A relationship? I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it right now. I got to get. I worry we're road. never going to see you again, Pudge. I want to know everything about you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, don't worry. You're going to see me again. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's fine. No. Oh. It, it does make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. That's our show. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me introduce everyone. This is Lily Sullivan, Sean Distin, Ryan Gall, Paul F. Tompkins. Thank you very much, Maine. We will return.